God and as we give him all the glory. I don't know what you will be able to show him how much you appreciate him. And I don't know what you should say, but we will do our own worship. And you also do you also do your own worship.
The place where you belong. To read on the screen. Praise the Lord that this week I was able to take a trip with my wife to Polotsky Commission. Polotsky is, is four hours. I have to go to a commission. Four and a half, 45 minute ferry ride. It hasn't been on a ferry for a long time. And uh, and the visited missionaries and the philosophy saw the Lord working, giving wisdom and praise the Lord for that. We're going to be praying for Nana and Shadi at uh, Push Club today. Does anybody else going? Did you know of? Anybody else going? Uh, we're going to be praying for those also that are helping uh, sites in church, serving in Koinonia, and for those that are struggling financially, emotionally, physically. Thinking of it. I hope you've been praying for Israel, the war that, or the fighting that's going on there, and the Lord and pray to provide peace. Peace, we're praying for exams that you are going to be or are starting soon, right? Um, and uh, Emmanuel's friends, uh, uh, Andre called me last night. He's on a five month sailing uh, tour, sailor, and so he goes five months at a time work. We're going to be praying the Lord will help him to be a blessing to those he meets and uh, protecting him. Tomorrow, uh, Peter and Maria and Lily, my children, are all in their final concert of the year for the Bible. We'll pray that the Lord will bless them. That Peter is playing a solo, a duet, a trio, and uh, ensemble. So he's got four different things he's playing tomorrow, and plus Maria, I think, almost the same thing. Lily, I'm not quite sure exactly where she's she's gonna play at least a trio or not. And uh and ensemble, I don't know if she's playing single or not. Missionary students, I pray the Lord to continue to bless them and, and help them to reach out. And there's two of the missionary students that are pregnant, Sveta and Lily, Lily Diagna, Dilagana Unison. It's interesting how they they can keep going even now. Uh, Spence is due in July. She's looking pretty big. <laughs> but she's, she's hanging in there and doing a good job. So we're praising the Lord for that. Is there anything else we can be praying for? Yes. Thank you. Going to Moscow on Wednesday. <laughs> praying for a safe trip. Or to help deal with uh, the situation she had there. Uh, a number of people I've, I've heard from time to time have had problems with the documents or something like that, and passports, and so let's just continue to pray for that. Anything else? Isaac. Isaac, yeah, Isaac is not feeling well. And, uh, and such there. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Okay, yeah. Uh, so you're going to <coughs> let him a stalk. That's a little wise way. Okay, Sergey.
Okay. How long you be there? You know? Twelve hours. Twelve hours there and back. Wow. It's almost twelve hours plane flight there. <laughs> okay. Protect you. Father, I thank you that you provide protection and you provide hope. Thank you that you helped Wade and I as we traveled this last week and protect the road and uh, enabled us to uh, share and encourage and be encouraged with the missionaries that we met and the missionary students. I pray that you'll continue to work, work with them, work in their lives, help them to recognize that uh, you are present with them and give them wisdom as they reach out to their friends and neighbors and relatives. I pray, Father, that you will change hearts, open up more doors that people will come to know and love you. Dear Lord, for those that are serving today in Koinonia, in Saritsa, in the English Club, I pray especially for that in the anonymous English Club, that you will bless them and help them to be a blessing. Bless those that are, are hurting and are physically. Motion spiritually, uh, financially, pray Isaac, Evan, Marvin, and maybe others that are, are hurting or pretty chill, just to you know, work in their hearts and experience, help them to experience your your strength, your love, your healing, and your, your support. Lord, help each one that are soon taking exams. Help them to prepare wisely for those exams. And they give wisdom in their, for their teachers and helping them to prepare. Help each one to focus their thoughts and their minds and uh, not waste time on things that don't need to be focused on. Lord, I pray also for Israel. And they, you said in your word to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So we pray, Lord, pray, Lord that. There will be peace in this troubled land and good wisdom here. I pray, Lord, for the relationships between the United States and uh, Russia, that you will help those, these two countries to be able to have uh, good relationships one with another. Thank you, Father, that uh, you can do anything. And I pray, Lord, that if you be your will, to allow for oil to come go with us on our trip and this summer. Thank you that we can buy tickets for this part of that. Bless Andre as he travels and he works in the ship where he is at, protecting, keep him, and uh, help him to be a blessing to those he meets, help him to grow as a result of uh, what he experiences. Also pray that you bless Sergei in his trip to Vladivostok and Cindy in her trip to Moscow. Thank you that you go before us and I pray that you help each one that travels to not only experience your blessing, but to be a blessing to they, those that they need. Bless Maria, Peter, and Lily tomorrow as they play in their final concert. Help them to do well. Thank you that you helped Maria this last week in, uh, in a contest that she had. And uh, I pray that you'll continue to bless her. Amen. Thank you, Father, that you do give uh, children to people. And I pray that you'll bless uh, Sveta and Lily as they're expecting babies. Thank you that they are faithful in their studies and in their homes and i pray that you'll give them strength and wisdom as they serve you help us now lord as we look into your word to understand and apply it to our lives to express experience your grace and mercy in our lives thank you for your love in jesus name amen, amen. i thought i'd start out with something very interesting that i saw the title of the sermon is Communicating in Communication, Marriage, Speaking the Truth in Love. But I saw this, uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, 
uh, I saw this sun and I thought, I thought that this is an interesting cartoon. The new ones are completely unable to communicate. They only look at their hands in despair. You catch it? Sometimes when you go someplace, you get, you see everybody going. <laughs> and nobody is talking with one another. I'm kind of, you know, here, here at Clinivia, we have very poor reception, right? And I think maybe that's good, because if we had good reception, everybody would sit there and go, they wouldn't talk with one another. You know, the electronic things today, they're, they're a blessing, but they can be a, a hurt and a problem too, right? So we're going to talk about communication today. Yeah, I call it communication marriage, but really it deals with all levels of communication. Uh, you're going to be talking with people, meeting with people in the next day and weeks, and, and uh, some of them are some people that you have very intimate relationships. Some are maybe not. But I would like us to really think about this, and throughout the, the passage of the scripture today, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to mention three different books, and, and uh, some of them you can download and you can read yourself if you haven't read them. Others, uh, if you would like, I would like, to, I will share them with you. But one of the greatest struggles that everyone faces is maintaining the good, relate, good communication and relationships. So we need to keep the lines of communication clear. Sometimes that's hard. Last Sunday we talked about maintaining clear communication with God and using Scripture to help us in our prayer lives. And I believe I'm being more and more convinced that one of our main jobs on earth is to pray. I think we do everything else sometimes but pray. And in a relationship, a couple's relationship, God mentions prayer several times. Paul says, Peter says, how a man treats his life affects his prayer life. So you treat your wife good so that you can pray. It's not pray so you can treat your wife good. It's treat your wife good so you can pray. So you get the priorities there, okay? Because how you relate to others affects your relationship with God. In fact, interesting, in, in 1 Corinthians uh, 7, 5, uh, Paul talks about a couple's sex life and how their sex life can either hinder or help or it affects their prayer life. Um, and uh, so we need to understand that we need to maintain clear communications with God. But also we need to maintain clear communication with one another. If our communication with God is important, our communication with others is also very important. Many of you are learning to be doctors. If you can't talk with your parent, patients, it's hard to really treat them. That's why they sit you and they, you learn Russian right away. Right? And it's, it's important. Now, we all relate in different ways. And I mentioned last Sunday about the book I was looking for, Five Languages of Love. And several of you have mentioned that you, you've read that book by, by Gary Chapman. And they express the five different ways we can express uh, love to one another. And I've included in your notes a chart. And, um, and if you really want to understand how, to ex how you express love and how others express love, you need to really watch that person carefully. And you might, not, you might try, looking at this chart, you might try different things with somebody. And you might find out that if you do this thing, they really respond. And you do this, you do them, they don't respond at all. Maybe it's because they don't understand expressions of love. Let's just go quickly through the five, the five different things. Each one, each one of the five areas uh, talks about uh, what language, which language they're talking about, how to communicate, actions to take, and actions to avoid. The first type of uh, a language they talk about are the words of affection. In those words of affection, you, you communicate by encouraging, affirming, 
appreciate, empathize, you listen attentively. If this is somebody, if you find somebody really responding when you encourage you and you say thank you, and they really respond uh, and they, you listen attentively to them, and wow, you, you, they, they, they become, they, they really appreciate that. You might send them a card or a note or, or a text, and uh, you generally encourage and help them, and that's some things you do. And if you do that to somebody and they say, oh, thank you so much for, so much for that card, that really touched my heart. Maybe that's somebody who really needs some words of encouragement. Just to non-critically, non-constructively criticize them or don't recognize or appreciate their effort will just, just, just shut this person down. Now, there are some people that they're very word-oriented. And there's other people that are physically oriented. They need, they need a physical touch. So the next one here. Their nonverbal usage or body language is, is used to emphasize love. Okay? Um, for a married person, a married couple, uh, a hug, a kiss, and holding hands uh, and show a physical affection. I really like it when my wife wants to hold my hand, you know, and uh, it, it, it touches me. Making intimacy a thoughtful priority is very important to such people. Physical neglect, long stints without intimacy, and receiving affection coldly can really set the person back. Now, there's other persons that they really like to receive gifts. I mean, you can say something, but if you don't give them a gift when you say them, uh, then it really doesn't make a difference. So they are looking for thoughtfulness and making uh, your, your spouse a priority. You speak, uh, purposely speak. And so what you need to do is you give gifts, thoughtful gifts. It doesn't have to be something big. It can be something that you really thought about and worked at or something like that. Um, Small things, not big gifts, just small little gifts of appreciation are very, very much appreciated. And you express your gratitude when you give a gift. Thank you for, for what you've done in your life. My wife is a little, she, she likes to receive little gifts like that. I'm not much like that, so I can remember to do that, you know. Sometimes quality time is important to some people. Uh, okay, uh, forget, by the way, giving gifts, if you forget a special occasion, or say, ah, oh, yeah, okay, thank you, when you get a gift, uh, that can just be a blow, <laughs> a blow to them. Quality time, next one. Under it, uninterrupted and focused conversation, one-on-one -on -one time is very critical. They're looking for your attention. Okay? Uh, so you need to create special moments. Take walks together. Do small things together. Go on a weekend together. These are very big. If when somebody's talking to you, you are, yeah, uh-huh, 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 that can turn that person off just like that. They need to have your undivided attention. I think everybody needs sometimes their undivided attention. You know? If you're doing something and somebody's coming in question, you need to set your stuff aside and attend to the news. That shows that you care. Now, there are some people also, they are service-driven. They look for acts of service. You phrase, hey, I'll help you with this. They want to know that you are there with them and partnering with them. They are very well, as people that have the act, uh, the, the acts, they're always trying to help somebody. Okay? 
So if you help them, wow, then uh, that's then they really appreciate that too. You do chores together, you maybe make breakfast for them. If you're a spouse, make breakfast and bread. Go out of your way to help them to alleviate their daily workload. Now, if this person, you make other people's ideas are more a priority than them, then they will think, oh, this person probably doesn't really love me. If you lack to follow through and you say you're going to do something and you don't follow through in what you do, then they say well, probably this person doesn't love me. Now, I have, um, I've just given a chart here and I found on the internet that you could download this book, a PDF of this book, and you can read it for yourself. And so I put the address there. Uh, what? Okay, you put it in there. Okay. Uh, you can put the address there. There's, there's this thing. If I, I uploaded it myself, I could re you could read the whole book just online. And so it's something that is widely recognized that is very important. Now, even if, even if words of affirmation is not your language of love, okay? You're not looking for somebody to say, well, good job, how are you doing, okay? Maybe you're looking for a hug or, or you're looking for a gift or you're looking for a helper or, or something like that. Even if all these relate to talking, I think we need to talk with one another regardless. Okay, and every part of the language is love involves some involves some type of speaking, and so we always speak with one another. So I thought what we would do is we just look what the Bible says about the tongue and the uses of our tongue in our communication. By the way, uh, I speak every Sunday, and I prepare my speech. But sometimes my wife says, you, you, you don't really, are, you aren't very romantic in what you say. I gotta really think of what I'm gonna say. You know, these, are, these are not some of my really strong points. So I have to really work on those things. So what you, what you say is important. And the Bible has six comparisons to help us to understand this little thing that we call the tongue or speech. Okay, let's just read a few of them. Let's read. James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Now, not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we all who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways, but in, in anyone who is never at fault, what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are very so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body and sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and street creatures are tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig bear, fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear fruit, bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Now, the first thing he does is he, he, compares, he compares the tongue uh, to a bit in a horse's mouth. 
Now, I don't know, I don't know how many of you have been around horses at all. So I, I made a picture of a horse with a bit in the mouth, okay? So you get it. A bit is it's just a, a short piece of metal. And a horse is a very strong animal. With that little piece of metal and a few straps, you can control a very strong, powerful animal. And this just shows that, that uh, the tongue can control something very powerful. Interesting, right? If I speak right, the tongue, little, little organ there, can control many, many, many powerful things. The second comparison is like a, a ship and a rudder, okay? I have a rudder there and, on a ship and uh, that's a part of the rudder. And he says, even though the wind blows one way with the rudder, by the way, if you're sailing, you can go against the wind using the rudder and knowing how to do that, okay? So the rudder means that you, it can, um, it can direct something very large. Just a little tongue can make a very large crowd, it can make a very large thing move and change and, and, uh, and direct them. It says that the, the tongue is, is very small part of your body, but it's extremely powerful. It can accomplish great things. If you know how to speak, you may not be strong physically, but if you know how to speak well, and you speak well, then you can do great things. But you need to be aware. The tongue is like a fire, a spark. One spark can cause deep, great damage and destroy a whole life. It also a spark can cause a fire, it can warm a heart and change a life. The fifth comparison that I have here is not in James, it's in Proverbs. The tongue is like a judge. Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death and those that love it will eat its fruit. You see, the tongue declares what is right and wrong according to, especially according to the person speaking, okay? The tongue reveals what's in the heart of a person, his standards and his, his values. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 34, for the mouth, from the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. You want to know what a person's heart is? All you have to do is listen to what they say. Another comparison that God, that the Bible has is the, the tongue is compared to a sword or medicine. Interesting. Proverbs 12, 18. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. So we can use our tongues to cause great hurt and harm, destroying lives. Or we can use them to bring peace and joy and love. The same tongue, depending on how we use it. So we can say this tongue is a very important part that we need to be aware of. And, the, and like we mentioned, nobody has completely con controlled the tongue, okay? But there's some principles that we, if we follow these principles, we can begin maybe limiting the negative effects of the tongue. So what must we do? James 1.19 says this, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. So there's three things, basics of communication. If you want to use your tongue wisely, first you need to be quick to listen. In other words, don't use your tongue. Why? We must be quick to listen because we know a lot less than we think. 
Okay? The person who writes away, begin talking, probably is being unwise. You see, by listening, we can learn what to say and when to say it. But if we if we don't listen, then we don't we don't understand exactly the right moment to speak the word, and we don't know what to say. We're going to discuss this in the groups. What hinders people from calmly and attentively listening? I thought of that. What? Why? Why don't people listen? I believe sometimes people don't listen it is because there's so much pride in their lives. I know the answer. I can I can I I, I know what I know what to do. And sometimes we're too so intent on showing off what we know that we miss the words of wisdom of others. You know, even children can speak words of wisdom. And I, I thought, well, maybe I should find some words of wisdom of children. Maybe you've heard some there. Uh, and I, but I, did, I didn't get around to that one, but maybe you've heard words of wisdom from a child. You know, a person who really wants to learn will listen carefully and think before they open their mouths to talk. Sometimes people come to me and they ask questions. Sometimes I know the answer. Sometimes I think I know the answers, but you know, I've always found it wise to say, let me think about that for a little bit. That was something that Oya said when we were dating, it was very important. She would ask me a question, and I would say, let me think about that for a while. I would think about it during the day, and the next day when you called, and then I would, then I would say, I think this. And that attracted me to her. Why? Because it told her that I was just spouting something off the top of my head. I was thinking and praying about that. So we must be quick to listen and slow to speak. You might say, well, those are the same things. But we must understand that since God and people judge us by what we say, we must be sure what we say is accurate and loving. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 37, for by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. So, have you ever said something you wish you didn't say? That's probably because we were too quick to speak. Sometimes not immediately responding to an action is the best way to defuse a situation and prevent the other person from sinning. Okay? Somebody says something harsh to us, and if I do not respond right away, then, then they won't come to me and respond to me right away. Maybe that will keep their, them from saying bad things too. Okay? So you, you wait, and you say, I, I'm going to think about that, and uh, thank you for what you said, and you just are slow to speak. The third principle in this passage in James, it says you need to be slow to become angry. Now, we all get angry. Unless I'm mistaken. Is there anybody here that has never gotten angry? I don't see any hands. And my hand isn't up either. Okay, every, all, all of us get angry because we are sinful human beings and we live in a sinful world and people knowingly and unknowingly offend us every day. 
But the emotion of anger can lead to an escalation of the problems we face. Because people often don't understand how they offend us, they must be confronted. But the question is how and when. And here I would like to recommend a book. It's called Carry Enough to Confront by David Augsburg. If you really want to be a peacemaker, if you really want to be a peacemaker, this is a good book to, to help you to understand how to respond to someone who has hurt you. How to restore those relationships. So, how do you react when somebody is angry at you? How do you react to anger? Proverbs says, a gentle answer <coughs> turns away wrath. So the moment somebody says something, words of anger, your, your first reaction is to turn the volume down. If you turn the volume up, if you react to somebody at the same volume level as they told you, it, it probably will escalate. Okay, But if you turn the volume down and speak quietly and gently, then the person will almost automatically also turn the volume down. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 25 to 32 expands a little bit more on how to deal and how do we talk. Let's read the passage. Ephesians 4 25 to 32. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who's been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ, in Christ, God forgave you. Now, these passages of Scripture that I read in James and, and here in uh, Ephesians, we could spend a lot of time on these because they sell, say a whole lot, okay? But I'm just going to mention some of the key aspects of this. Principles of our speech. First of all, it says that we should not lie. When you lie, you usually hurt yourself because we are connected to one another. Okay? Um, lying if also hides problems that can be easily solved if they are dealt with earlier. And I, I'm thinking here also, you, this is the same of, of a physical problem in a, um, in a disease, right? You think you're doing okay, your body's lying to you. It may be deathly sick and you don't know it. Okay? So the pain helps you understand that there's a problem. And if you lie and say, okay, it's not nothing serious, uh, you can't deal with the problem early on. So if you have a problem, you need to deal with it early on. And, and when you know the truth, you can deal with it. Lying is also often a way of stealing from people, right? Uh, people are they're very good at lying, and they can, they can trick people out of a lot of money. But in the same sense, we must recognize that stealing not only involves material things, 
When you steal something, material something, something, something from someone, and the Lord convicts you of your sin, you can replace what you've stolen, right? You can give the money back. You can give the thing back. But if you've lied and you've stolen time, that's something you can't give back. You can't restore. Ever thought about that? Sometimes we say we're going to do something or be someplace or, or that type of a thing, and somebody expects something to us, but we've lied. We don't show up when we're supposed to. We don't do what we're supposed to do. And the result is this person sitting there waiting, and what we've done is we've stolen their time. Ever thought of that? We can steal people's time by not doing what we say, what we promise to do. If they expect one thing and we do another, we, in a sense, are stealing their time. <laughs> I think we need to think about that sometimes. The second thing it says there, not only don't lie, it says speak the truth. You might say, well, that's just the same as, as not lying. But here he says, we need to speak the truth. That means we need to speak. You know, I can lie, I can not lie by, by, uh, by being quiet, you know. Uh, not say something, I won't lie, okay. Uh, once I heard somebody say, oh, wow, well, I didn't promise that. No, you didn't, but you should have. You know, you, you, yeah. you should have spoken. But when we speak, um, what we're doing is we're not being silent in the presence of sin and ignorance. We see sin and, and ignorance and we do something about it, okay? So we need to, in that sense, speak the truth, okay? If, if, um, if there's a hole in the sidewalk and you see somebody walking right towards that hole uh, and you say, watch out, you've spoken the truth. Okay, but if you're quiet and the person falls in the hole, who's at fault? The person, yeah, because they weren't watching, but you also because you weren't warning. So in order, to, when, you, when we speak the truth, we're being kind and loving. But at the same time, this does not mean that when we speak the truth, we're saying everything we know. Everything we say should be the truth, but it doesn't mean that every time you speak, you need to pour out your whole entire knowledge of the subject. I say that because sometimes people cannot handle the whole truth about themselves. So we tell the truth as much as we know they can handle it. That's basically the way God deals with us, right? God knows a lot about us, and if he told us everything about ourselves, well, we couldn't handle it. It would overwhelm us. So God reveals little by little the truth in our lives. And God cannot lie, but he does not always give us all everything we want to know. He reveals, he reveals enough about us and our situation so that we can make good, wise, and I might say godly decisions. So you don't lie, you speak the truth. And the third aspect says, in our angry, do not anger, do not sin. Like I mentioned, it's all natural for us to be angry. And our anger can really motivate us to speak and to do something. And that's good that our anger, we should be angry about sin. Uh, because sin against, is against God and it hurts God and it hurts people. So it, anger moves us to act, but our anger should not cause us to do what is wrong. So what's the difference? Anger is emotion. 
that drives us to act. Love is also, you might say, emotion that drives us to act. Affection. Okay? These are all emotions. And emotions properly focused, properly expressed, are good. But they can be improperly express, expressed as well. Hurtful words that often are only partly true. When we say something hurtful of somebody, often those words are only partly true. And they can cause great damage. And one of the ways to have make sure you, in your anger, you do not sin is to avoid certain phrases and, and expressions. Like, you always do this. You're always, every time I see you, you are, okay? Every time we meet, you hurt me, okay? Every time? Always? I'm sure that the other person can say, I don't think it's always. I think if they can, they can point to at least one or two instances where they haven't done what is wrong, you know? So, we need to speak the truth when we confront somebody about what they've done wrong. You can say, when you did this, it hurt me. When you did this, it was wrong. And you talk about the specific act. You point about the time when they sinned. Um, see, when you say to a person, you are an evil person, or you always do things, you are attacking a person's character and not their actions. And by pointing to a specific action, you allow the person to make a decision not to repeat that action. But if you say to somebody, you are a bad person, you're always this way, they say, well, okay, I guess I'm that way. You just have to put up with me. They don't do any suggestions about changing. You see, it's difficult to change your character but more easy to change your actions. So, we're, in our anger, we make sure we don't sin. We speak very clearly. You may be angry, you may lower your voice when you speak, so you don't uh, prompt the other person to also sin. <laughs> But despite all this, as James says, we all sin with our tongues. Right? We all sin with our tongues. And people sin, sin against us with it. The fourth principle in our communication is that we need to forgive quickly. Why do you forgive quickly? Because God, His mercy, has forgiven us. Jesus reminded Peter of his great debt to God, the parable of the unmerciful servant. And by the way, if, if you have a hard time, you're thinking about someone who has hurt you and you have a hard time forgiving that person, I encourage you to take this passage of scripture, Matthew 18, 21 to 35, and think about it and meditate on it a, a, a lot. Because it talks about how great our debt is before God. We also must forgive quickly because usually a lack of forgiveness hurts us more than it hurts the other person. Somebody hurts you, you think about it, you stew about it, you get all upset and the person just forgot about what you did a long time ago. You carry this big burden on your shoulders, you, you create ulcers in you, 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 your digestion system, system doesn't work right. Why? Because you're, you're, you're angry about what this other person has done. And the other person just forgot about it three seconds after they did it. And who gets hurt most by a lack of forgiveness? You yourself. So we need to be quick to forgive. By forgiving, we decide not to use the offense of the person against them. 
We don't carry the offenses around with us, but release them into the hands of a loving and all-powerful God. David Augsburger not only wrote the book Caring Enough to Confront when somebody does something wrong, he wrote another book, and I have both books in my library. If somebody wants to read them, I'll, I'll bring them on Wednesday, I guess. I forgot to bring them today. But it's, the other book is, is Caring Enough to Forgive, and it's an interesting book. I, I've never had a, seen a book like that, okay? You know, usually you open a book, it's Caring Enough to Forgive. That's what it is. It's Caring Enough to Forgive. You go like this, okay? You read it. Now that's carrying enough to give. But the, other, the book is printed in such a way that if you turn the book around, it says carrying enough not to forget. And it starts like this way, and you can read it this way. <laughs> Actually, the, the two sides of the same coin. You know, how do you forgive and what do you do uh, in restoring relationships? And in, in that book, it says the real focus of forgiving is not individualistic release from guilt or proof of goodness, but an interpersonal reconciliation, wholeness, and life together in Christian community. I got that back from a review that I read on the on, on thing. Name that. Forgiveness and restoration should be a priority in our lives. So we need to be quick to forgive. Finally, we need to speak the truth in love. Ephesians 4, verse 15. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is in the head that is Christ. Each one of us has relationships. We have different levels of relationships. Some of it just friends. Some of our more intimate relationships. And I believe God has given us all these relationships in order to help us to mature. And when we speak the truth in love to one another, we build one another up and not tear them down, as we read in First Ephesians 4.29. Now in saying all this, we must realize that communication First of all, good communication first deals with the main problem in here. Before we restore relationships, I need to make sure that my relationship with God in my heart is right before God. James says, we praise, we praise God and curse people with the same mouth. Why? Ever thought of that? Ever done that? Yeah? With the same mouth, we said something good to somebody, and then we turned around and we said something bad to them. He said, how can that happen? James says in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 8, we do that because we're double-minded. We say we trust God. At the same time, we doubt His word. Have you done that? We worship God, but we hang on to our idols. So it's obviously from our mouths is going to come conflicting words. We can only have pure hearts if we have the Holy Spirit in our lives guarding us, guiding us, and helping us to know the truth about ourselves. You see, it's from our hearts that we speak. And the Holy Spirit can change our hearts. And he comes in, and we humbly repent and ask the Lord to change us. Forgiveness because of what Jesus did for us. Jesus died. Why? So that we will know the truth, and the truth will set us free. From what? From our own sin, from our evil tongues. From bondage that we find ourselves in. Today it's my prayer.
that each one here today will know God's truth, God's truth about love and forgiveness that God offers to each one of you, each one of us. Only when, only when we recognize that we are loved, we are forgiven, can we speak the truth in love. Can we control our anger? Can we speak wisely? Only then can we control, control our powerful tongue. Only then can we love as we are loved. I pray that the Lord will help us this day, this week, to continue this mighty work of our lives today. Thank you, Father. Thank you for, the, for your love that you have poured out to each one of us. Thank you that we recognize that you love us because of what Jesus did for us in coming to live among us, to die and, and, and raise from the grave. Thank you, Father that you demonstrate your love to us each day through the Holy Spirit convicting us of sin and showing us the truth about our lives and the lives of those around us. Thank you, Father, that you are in charge. And we can trust you for our lives and those around us. I pray, Holy Father, that you will cleanse our, our lips Cleanse our hearts and make us people who will speak the truth in love to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You, know, you might in your group share the following things. What's your language love? If you already know, that'd be great. If you're not, you might think about it a little bit. Uh, you might discuss why it's difficult to listen to the truth. Somebody comes up and tells you the truth, and you don't want to hear it. Eh? Why is it difficult? Well, what disturbs you the most when people think about that? Okay, you might share, and maybe because of what you share, somebody might bite their tongue a little bit more around you. They might, might not do what you would say. Okay. Uh, and what prevents you from settling? Remember, it says, don't let the sun go down. I mean, yeah. yeah. Let's let's have a time where we're going to share in our um, offerings what the Lord has given to us, expressing our gratitude for what He's done. Okay, let's do that.
Now may he who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of his grace. To him be the glory both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Okay. Go Sam. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. I think uh, you said who was living for when you spoke about it? The blood. Ah, okay. The wisdom of the best. Now we thank God for another shining Sunday. And um, we thank God that He has brought us back to sheephood. He has brought back, brought all of us back to the house to listen to His word. And today, our senior pastor has taken us to another dimension as communication in mind, speaking the truth in love. It's very, very difficult. It's a very, very difficult topic. Because we all lie. We all lie. And I remember very well when my brother went for an interview in America and was telling me. Um, we were supposed to face a certain and care to what we call it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and on, I think, uh, number 13, number 13, uh, there's a very interesting question there. Have you ever told a lie before? <laughs> I was uh, He said it, it was, it was, he sat down five minutes. He didn't know how to answer the question. And um, he said yes. He answered yes. Um, and so at the end of the day, he, he would say when he, 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 took, he saw that the the, the officers who were examining the, the questions, um, when they take your sheet, they just turn it to the next the next page. They don't even start looking number one, two, three. They just take the next sheet and look at, at number 13. Have you ever told a lie before? And he said, no. I mean, all those who answered no failed the, <laughs> failed the, the test. Yes, because it is impossible to be a human being and you don't tell a lie in your lifetime. And see, the, the company, what was it? later on they found that when the company was trying to find out they are looking for truthful people. Yes. So if uh, if you say no, it means you're already a liar. So they are and they employ you to such an important position. It means that throughout your throughout your services with the company, you are always going to lie to the managing director. So they don't need you there. And very, very, very interesting. I said goodbye when he told me the first time I laughed over it. I said, yes, this is America. They are trying to work out those for us. Amen. And today we are very glad that Pastor has given us a big chat, which we cannot do it uh, in 15, 30 minutes. So that is why we we have to take it home and then we look at it at a free time. And Pastor has given us some uh, verses which we can also look at it. And uh, finally, he has given us some questions to answer during our group meeting. What is your language of love? Um, I feel as young as young guys, anytime we want to talk to girls, and then um, uh, we, we sometimes we take that posting. Now we want to convince the girls, but they are all lies. You see, we tell a lot of lies to the girls just for them to get their head going around. And we tell them. Some things which we don't even have. Uh, oh, you know, my father is this. Uh, you know, my uncle is this. And then the girl will finally give in. And at the end of the day, after marriage, the girl will know that you have only got three pairs of socks. <laughs> so please, let's try to talk. You see, it's very, very easy, very, very easy to speak the truth and lies. 
very, very easy. Um, you see, if you want to speak lies, you have to cook it. You have to take off it. There's this. Last week, there's this. So when they ask you, what happened last week? You start to like, oh, I said it. So that you want them to come one by one. But when you say the truth, it's the truth. So you don't even have to think of it. When you ask, oh, yes, I did. That is the truth. So the lies is always to get us into trouble. Um, some man, um, as I was telling us how to answer some very important concepts, that he gave us an example that when Allah asked him something, even if he knows the answer, he said, oh, let me think about it. You see, what he's trying to, pastor is trying to tell us that, even if you have the, 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 the good answer, just take time. You see, thinking about it for some few hours or three hours, maybe during that time you get some new ideas, and you find out that what you wanted to say at that time, right time was not even the best. And uh, see most guys they want and some guys they also they need quick answers. When they ask you a question, they are expecting you to tell them, give them a quick answer. And by giving them a quick answer, we lie to them. And then when we lie to them, they are happy. And they say, oh this guy is great. I just I mean he has got answers to all my questions. But that is not the truth. So let's think of some of the questions first before we answer. Right. So when we get into our groups, please don't forget to try and answer these four very important questions. And then it will help us in our future life. Amen. And pastors, uh, you know pastors got a lot of a lot of things to do. Is working on other avenues. He has got some problems to solve, some rivers to cross, and some mountains to cry. And uh, by still believing God, it's not easy. It's not easy. But he still believing God that God will have His own way because He's the Creator of heaven and earth. And we still have faith in God, and um, so we call Brother Joseph to. Come and pray for our senior pastor and then put all his family covered in the blood of Jesus and then we know their plans from tomorrow up for the children and what they are about to do. So please let us pray for our senior pastor. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of Father, you have blessed us with many more pastors. Father, we thank you for how far you have brought him and we thank you for the strength that Father you keep giving him each and every week. We thank you for the messages that Father you bless him with to come and bless us also. And we thank you for all that Father you are doing in his life. We continue to pray with one accord and ask that Lord we continue to bless him and his family, continue to protect them against all evil. Father, I pray that you, Lord, will continue to guide him in everything that Father he set out to do. Father, you know the future, everything that Father is planning to do to achieve, that we, O oh Lord, will order his steps. Father, uh, he's planning together with his family this summer for to travel. Father, you know everything that is concerning this. I pray in the name of Jesus that Father, you provide answers. Father, you will provide a way where there seems to be no way. Father, everything is in your hands and in your mighty providence. I pray that, Lord, whatever you have set out will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Father, lead and direct all affairs. And at the end, Father, we give you all glory and adoration. We thank you for answering prayer. Amen. 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 Yes. Who is here for the first time? No one. Yes. No newcomer. So we go. Ah, we are meeting here on Wednesday. For me to service, please come along and then let us continue to discuss the word of God. No things we, we, we thought we knew before, but when we come to meet this service, you know that uh, we are lacking of so many things. And then uh, we'll get new ideas and we tell us how to move forward. Amen. Yes. Um, 
Bradley took on Saturday at 6 p.m. Six for summer. So please come along. Especially all those staying around the church. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's very, very sad that those staying around the church don't come for prayer meeting. You see, if I say around the church, from King to the Center, around all this area, they are in the center. So I expect you to come to Sunday, Saturday service. But it's unfortunate that people don't come. Everybody is busy. Uh, six to seven. I don't know why. Why only six to seven people are busy? Why can't they be busy after seven? So please come along at six o'clock. It's only an hour. Any program for Saturday, you learn how to. Yes. Right. Um, Sunday, one p.m. as usual. Come and then. Start to pray and to sanctify ourselves for all the main service. And then we started the main service at 2 p.m. Um, those absent today, I see a lot of empty spaces. I don't know why. Please, um, if they are your friends, I don't even say if they are your friends, everybody is a friend to each and every one. If your flatmate or your roommate or your, your housemate or your hostel, please, when you go, find out. What is happening? Maybe the person was sick, and then uh, so that we can pray for the person. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Immediately after church, um, the church council will be meeting. Uh, the senior pastor is calling for a short church council meeting immediately after our group discussion. So please, if you know you're a member of the church council, don't run away after. Uh, group discussions, and then um, I think who, who, who left there are also members, and okay, that's okay. Right, I see uh, very few people today, so what we are going to do is, if you have your group members are just one or two, please try and join, try and join other groups as we do always, so that we will quickly make it successful and then we go to the Get uh, any yes, any bad days this week? Yes. And everybody sitting down. Yes. Happy birthday to who?
And each day as he walks with you and serves you. Thank you for his faithfulness here. Bless him with your blessing, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
And then long run, you know that yes, this guy came from Russia. Right? He's teaching us some good things. But by God's grace, you see, we have learned something from here. All these years we have stayed here. We, we came to Bogogra, we came to Colonia. Not for nothing but we have learned something. So I think it will keep us on our way back home. So may God bless all of you as we go. Uh, don't forget we have group meeting and check council meeting. Uh, I thank you all for coming and God bless you and uh, I hope next Sunday we will come back by the grace of God and sing a wonderful hymn. Just before, just before I sit down, uh, there's a special announcement from uh, our lovely sister Joy, Lois. Please, can you come around? It's not an engagement people are telling me. First of all, I understand that they bring the food for all of us to eat. And then also, it's not for yeah, as I said, it's not for individuals. And there, there have been some occasions where people wear and banish our more of name, and then they come and take their drink that we are all supposed to drink together. And it's not nice. So it's an extra cost for the church. And then also, today, just this morning, after some brought the biscuits, a new packet, and someone came to open it and took some. I understand that maybe you didn't eat before coming to church and maybe your family or something. Just come to any of us. We, we will give the food to you. It's not for me, it's not for any of us over there. So you just come to us. People have come, oh, I'm hungry, I want something to eat. I'll just give you something to eat. But you going there on your own accord to go and serve yourself, it's not nice. Like so please. <laughs> Or drink it. You come and ask us. Don't just go there to say thank you very much. Thank you. That's a very important message. Take, take, take good note about it. Yes. If you are going to eat your shashlik and shawarma or all this, please, they are selling drinks there. Why do you go there? Pastor, do you understand what they are doing? They will go there and they will see that there are drinks there, so they will not buy drinks. So they will come and take the, the colonial drinks. Look, now we are going to buy a, a new box and put back on it. Okay. Right. So we thank uh, uh, Royce for the announcement. Uh, Jesus has already said, you know, see, he said, ask. Thank you very much for our attention. Okay, God bless you. We are meeting tonight.